Today we are doing lesson um, 3.5, solving two-step equations. Our I can statements for today, I can call, solve two-step equations and I can solve real life problems. So solving two-step equations means that you have two operations in your equation that need to be undone. So for example, here's a two-step equation, five plus four X equals 33. So our two operations that are in um, this particular equation, those are addition and multiplication. The addition, you can see the addition sign here. The multiplication, you can't see that sign, but four X means four times X. So we've got multiplication and we've got addition. When we do two-step equations, we have to do order of operations backwards. So following order of operations backwards means we're going to undo addition first. We're working backwards because it's an equation. All right, so um, here for this next one here, it says show the work operations underneath each line. It's really important to show your work on equations, particularly two-step equations, to help keep yourself organized and uh, to make sure that you've done all the steps that you need to do. So first thing, we're gonna get rid of the addition. We're gonna use the inverse operation, which is subtraction. So this is a plus five. We're getting rid of the number without the letter first. Okay, we get rid of that five by subtracting five and we subtract on five over here as well. We're doing once everything once on each side of the equation. And for some people drawing that line through the center helps keep things organized, feel free to do it. We're only doing five on one side, five on the other. We're not doing anything away from the four X. Those aren't like terms. We're just subtracting five holes from the whole numbers on each side. Five minus five is zero, so I'm left with four X. Then over here, I have to do 33 minus five which is 28. So now I have four times X equals 28. This is multiplication. To get rid of multiplication, we use division. So I'm gonna divide on both sides by four. Four X divided by four is X. Four divided by four is one, so I have one X. And then 28 divided by four is seven. So my answer to this equation is X equals seven. To keep both sides of the equation balanced, um, we must do the same thing to both sides. That gives us equivalent equations. Okay. And then over here it says concept. Remember when we simplify or evaluate, we do a standard order of operations. So that's parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, left to right, subtraction and addition, left to right. But when we are solving equations, we are undoing the operations. So that's why we're doing order of operations backwards. Okay, so um, let's try a few problems. So how to show work? Show every step on both sides. And as a reminder, you need to make sure you check your work. On an equation, you should know 100% whether or not you solved it correctly. Okay. Let's go ahead and try this one. We're gonna solve for H. H divided by five plus six equals 15. All right, so we're gonna do one on each side of the equation. Since we have multiple things on each side, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a line here to help keep our um, work organized. We're doing it once to each side. This is a plus six to get rid of six. That plus six we're subtracting. We undo addition with subtraction. 6 minus 6 is 0, so I'm left with h divided by 5 equals, then over here, 15 minus 6 equals 9. Okay, 
So now I have h divided by 5 equals 9. To cancel out the division, we use multiplication. 5 divided by 5 equals 1, so I'm left with h equals. And then over here, 9 times 5 is 45. So my answer here is going to be 45. All right, I'm going to check my work. I'm going to start it here, but I'm, I'm going to continue down into that extra white space just so I have enough room. Okay, so I'm taking my answer 45. I'm putting it back in for H, and then I'm going to see if it works. 45 divided by 5 plus 6 equals 15. All right, let's see. 45 divided by 5 is 9 plus 6 equals 15. 9 plus 6 equals 15. Yep, that's true. So that means I solved my equation correctly. All right, let's look at this next one. Solve for m. 8 equals m minus 7 divided by 4. There's a difference between this one and the last one, even though they both involve division. And the difference is here are m minus 7. That's all written in the numerator. What that means is if I was solving it normally, I would take my number minus 7 and then I would divide. Because that um, fraction bar there acts like a grouping symbol. It's almost like parentheses. It means the same thing as parentheses. Normally we would do parentheses first. But really we're going to do the stuff inside the parentheses, inside that group with the fraction bar last. So on this one, because the whole thing is divided by 4, I've got to get rid of that part first. So I undo division with multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by 4 on each side. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I'm left with m minus 7. Okay, now I need to get rid of the subtraction. I do that with addition. So I'm adding plus 7 on both sides, negative 7, or minus 7, plus 7 is 0, so it leaves me with m. And then 32 plus 7 equals 39. So 39 is going to be my answer for m. All right, let's go ahead and check it. So I'm going to put it back into the original equation. So 8 equals 39 minus 7 divided by Four. Okay, so let's check it. 8 equals, I have to do my grouping symbol numbers first. 39 minus 7, which is 32. Divided by 4 equals 8. Yep, that's true. So I checked it, and it's correct. All right, let's look at this next one. So I have negative 3 times the quantity x plus 5 equals 2. Check your solution. So anytime it says check, you need to make sure you write down a check. All right, so here I have a number in front of parentheses. So my first step is going to be distributive property to get rid of those parentheses. So negative 3 times x is negative 3x plus negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 equals 2. Now I could have written that as a minus 15 instead of a plus negative. It doesn't really matter. Now we have an equation that looks similar to the ones that we did on the last slide. I've got addition or subtraction, depending on whether or not you put plus, negative, or just minus. And then I have multiplication. I've got to get rid of the number without the letter first, because I'm doing order of operations backwards. So that means I'm canceling out my negative 15 or my minus 15, depending on how you wrote it. To get rid of those, I have to add a positive because a negative 15 plus a positive 15 equals zero. So I'm gonna add 15 over here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a line here, help me keep my sides organized. Okay, negative 15 plus positive 15 equals zero. So I'm left with negative three X on this side of the equation equals, and then two plus 15 is 17. Okay, then I'm doing negative three times x. So to get rid of that multiplication, I'm dividing. I'm keeping the sign. I'm not changing the sign. I'm keeping that sign. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 
is going to be 1. So I'm left with 1x. And then um, if you see something that doesn't divide evenly an equation like this one, negative 17, or sorry, positive 17 divided by negative 3, you can think of that as a fraction and simplify your fraction if you want. I like to do that. I think it's a little faster. Um, you can also do the long division. Show, I'll show it both ways. If you want to do the long division, it would look like this. 17 divided by negative 3. I know these are different signs. I'm going to go ahead and put my negative sign in the front. 3 divided by, um, sorry, 3 goes into 17, um, let's see, 5 times. 5 times 3 is 15. I subtract, I get 2. I could keep going if I want to with a decimal, but if it doesn't say whether or not I need a fraction or a decimal, me personally, I'd rather stop doing my division here and say my answer is negative 5 and 2 thirds. Now depending on your numbers here, you might be able to get from your fraction to your mixed number or your fraction to the simplified fraction without having to do all the long division. But on this one, I showed the long division just so you can see it. If you wanted to keep going until a decimal, and some people prefer decimals, I would just add a zero, add, bring it down, add my decimal here. Three goes into 26 times, I'd get 18. I'd get two again, I've got a pattern there because I would end up with another 20. So I end up having negative five and six tenths repeating, either way is acceptable. So both of those are equally acceptable answers. Okay, so now I'm going to check my solution. To do that, I need to put it back into the equation. I'm gonna keep my mixed number one instead of my repeating decimal one. It's gonna make it easier for me to check. Negative three times, and then I need negative five and two thirds plus five equals two. All right, order of operations says parentheses first, although I could use distributive property first if I wanted to. Negative five and two thirds plus positive five is gonna give me a negative two thirds. Different signs, find the difference. Then I'm gonna take that times negative three. I'm gonna write my negative three over one because with fractions, you need to have them with two parts. All right, let's see. Negative three times negative two is positive six. 1 times 3 is 3. 6 over 3, yep, that does equal 2. So I've checked it, and it's correct. All right, here's another one with fractions. Now this x over 8 looks like a fraction, but it really means x divided by 8. Minus 1 half equals negative 7 halves. Fractions and division, that's really the same thing. All right, I'm gonna rewrite it just to give myself a little more space underneath it. All right. Okay, so I've got division and I've got subtraction. I need to cancel out the subtraction. I do that with addition, adding one half. If you started by doing boom, boom, same thing, negative one half plus positive one half. All right, so negative one half plus positive one half equals zero. So I'm left with x divided by eight equals, and then negative seven halves plus one half. I usually like to write it horizontally. I wasn't thinking about it, but I'll go ahead and just write it that way. Denominator stays the same, two. Negative seven plus positive one, different signs, find the difference. It's gonna be negative six halves. And since I know that divides evenly, I'm gonna go ahead and do that x divided by 8 equals negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. All right, now I have to get rid of the division. I do that with multiplication. 8 divided by 8 is 1, so I'm left with x. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 4. Different signs. Answer is negative for multiplication and division. So my solution to this equation is negative 24. It says check my solution, so I need to actually write it down and show the work. 
negative 24 divided by 8 minus 1 half equals negative 7 halves. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and solve it. So negative 24 divided by 8 is negative 3 minus 1 half equals negative 7 halves. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just change that so it looks like a fraction, negative 3 over 1. I need a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply by 2. Negative 3 halves is like negative 6 halves. Minus 1 half equals negative 7 halves. Boom, change to addition, boom, change to sign, same signs, find the sum, negative 6 halves plus negative 1 half is negative 7 halves. So I checked it and it's correct. Your um, work for your checks should have two steps for two step equations. I had my subtraction, or I'm sorry, my division step, then I had my subtraction step on this one because it was a fraction, I had to show my common denominator as well. You can't just write it out and put a check mark that it's right, you need to show the work to support it. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try these three on your own. Okay, let's go ahead and check our answer. So number one, negative five times C plus nine equals negative 16. I'm going to subtract nine. All right, so negative five C equals. All right, I'm gonna do boom change to addition, boom change to sign 16 plus negative nine same signs, find the sum, that's going to be negative 25. Okay, now I have negative 5 times C, I get rid of the multiplication with division, so I'm going to be dividing both sides by negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1, so I'm left with 1C. Negative 25 divided by negative 5 is 5, same signs, answers positive for multiplication and division. All right, now I need to do my check. All right, so I'm gonna just try to squeeze it in over here on the side. Negative five times five plus nine equals negative 16. All right, let's see, negative five times five is negative 25 plus nine equals negative 16. Yep, that's true, so I checked it and it's correct. All right, let's try the second one. I think I'm gonna change color just so you can um, keep track of which work goes with which equation. I've got parentheses, I'm gonna start with the distributive property. Three times X is three X minus, three times four is 12. You wanna do a boom, boom, and think of that as a negative 12? You certainly can, equals nine. I need to get rid of the subtraction first. I do that by adding a positive 12 to both sides. Negative 12 plus positive 12 equals zero, so I'm left with three nine, I'm sorry, three x. And then nine plus 12 is gonna be 21. So I have three x equals 21. Now I need to divide both sides by three. 21 divided by three is seven, so my answer is x equals seven. Three divided by three is one. So there's my answer, x equals seven. Now I need to go back and check my solution. So I'm gonna put it back in three, times the quantity seven minus four equals nine. Seven minus four equals three. Three times three equals nine. Yep, that's true. So it's correct. All right, next one. M divided by two plus six equals 10. I've got division and addition. I've got to get rid of the addition first. So I'm gonna subtract six from both sides. Six minus six is zero, so I'm left with m divided by two. 10 minus six equals four. Cancel out division with multiplication, so I'm gonna multiply by two on both sides. Two divided by two is m, one m. Four times two is eight. All right, now I need to do my check, so I'm gonna put eight back in for m. Eight divided by two plus six equals 10. 8 divided by 2 is 4, plus 6 equals 10. Yep, I've checked it, it's correct. All right, let's take a look at this next one. So on this one, I have two 
numbers with variables, I have some like terms that I need to combine before I solve it. So I have a picture with algebra tiles here just to give you a visual of what that equation means. So my long rectangles here are x's and then red ones are um, negative, greens are positive, and then my ones are just ones. So 3x minus 3y, sorry, minus 8y equals 10. If I cancel out some zero pairs, and we did that when we did our algebra tiles and we did our integer chips, the positive and the negative, those were a zero pair. And I look to see what's left over. I have negative 5y equals positive 10. When I combine my like terms, and I could do boom, boom, Negative 8y plus positive 3y is a negative 5y equals 10. Now I'm going to get rid of this multiplication with division, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is a positive 1, so I have y equals, and then 10 divided by negative 5 equals a negative 2. Different signs answers negative for multiplication and division doesn't say to check, but I'm going to go ahead and write one down just so you can see what a check for this type of equation would look like. So I'm going back to my original equation. 3 times negative 2, which was our y, minus 8 times negative 2 equals 10. I'm going to go ahead and do our boom boom here, make that a negative 8. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus Negative 8 times negative 2 is going to be a positive 16. Same sign, answers positive, different signs, answers negative for multiplication and division. Negative 6 plus 16, different signs, find the difference. 16 minus 6 is 10. More positives, answers positive. So yes, I got a positive 10. I've checked my answer and it's correct. All right, and then our last type of problem is a story problem. So let's go ahead and read this situation for our equation. The height of the top of a roller coaster hill is 10 times the height, h, of the starting point. The height decreases 100 feet from the top to the bottom of the hill. The height at the bottom of the hill is negative 10 feet. Find h. Okay, so here's a picture of what it looks like. We know there's 10 times h times multiplication. So I know I've got 10 h in there. I know it's decreasing, so that means going down 100 feet. So minus 100. And then it says that it is, the total is going to be negative 10. All right, so let's go ahead and solve it from here. I need to get rid of the subtraction first. I'm going to do that with addition. So I'm going to add 100 to both sides. Negative 100 plus 100 is 0, so I'm left with 10h. And then negative 10 plus positive 100 is 90. Different signs find the difference. More positives, answers positive. Then I need to get rid of the times 10. I do that by dividing by 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1, so I have 1h. 90 divided by 10 is 9. So height is 9, and then I need to go back to look at the problem to see what the label will be. On this one, it's going to be feet. All right, go ahead and pause your video and try these last two problems, last three problems. All right, let's check our answer. So for number five, I have four minus two y plus three equals negative nine. I'm gonna go ahead and do a boom boom here before we solve. All right, four and three are like terms. I'm gonna combine them. Four plus three is seven plus negative two y equals negative nine. This is a positive seven. So that means I need to subtract seven from both sides, minus seven. 7 minus 7 is 0. I'm left with negative 2y left on the side. Boom change to addition, boom change the sign. Negative 9 plus negative 7 is negative 16. Then this is multiplication. I need to cancel that out with division, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. 
y equals positive 8. It does say I used to check my solution, so I'm going to check it. I'm going to write it up here. So I have 4 minus 2 times 8 plus 3 equals 9. We need to do multiplication before we do the addition and subtraction. If you want to do boom boom now, you can. I'll go ahead and do it that way. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. 4 plus negative 16 plus 3 equals 9. Let's see, 4 times negative 16, different signs, find the difference. Um, that's going to be negative 12. Negative 12, ooh, plus positive 3 equals negative 9. And now that I'm looking back, this was a negative, which means when I rewrote it here, I wrote it wrong. That's why you check. You go back to make sure you did everything right. Negative 12 plus positive 3 is going to be a negative 9. More negatives answers negative for addition and subtraction. All right, let's go over and look at 6. So I have negative 8 equals 1 and 3 tenths m minus 2 and 1 tenth m. Boom change to addition, boom change to sign. Different signs find the difference. The one with the greater absolute value goes on the top. So I'm going to forget about the m's for a minute, and I'm just going to um, work on adding with my numbers. Okay, different signs find the difference. So even though this is a plus sign, I'm subtracting. Okay, 1 minus 3 takes me into the negatives. I've got to borrow from the 2, so that becomes a 1. This becomes an 11. 11 minus 3 is 8. I bring down that decimal. 1 minus 1 is 0. More negatives, answer is negative. I'm going to go back over to my equation. Negative 8 equals negative 8 tenths m. This is multiplication. We need to cancel it out with division. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 8 tenths. The number I'm dividing by has a decimal, so I need to move it over once. Move it over once here. Add that placeholder 0. All right, so this is like negative 80 divided by negative 8. That's going to be a positive 10. All right, negative 8 tenths divided by negative 8 tenths is positive 1. So I have 10 equals m. Let's go ahead and check it. Negative 8 equals 1 and 3 tenths times 10 minus 2 and 1 tenth times 10. All right, going to go ahead and do boom, boom. Okay. 1 and 3 tenths times 10 is 13. 2 and 1 tenth times 10 is 21. Really, this is a negative 21. Equals negative 8. Let's think about it. 13 plus negative 21. Different signs. Find the difference. Yeah, that's going to be 8. All right, let's last one here. An example for the height at the bottom of the hill is negative 5 feet. Find the height h. Okay, so my equation in this last one was 10h minus 100 equals negative 10. Now it's going to equal negative 5. So I have 10h minus 100 equals negative 5. I think that 10 is positive. Yes, it is. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and solve this one. I'm going to start by adding a positive 100 to both sides. Okay, so those are going to equal 0. I'm left with 10h on that side of the equation. Negative 5 plus positive 100 is 95. We're going to divide both sides by 10 to cancel out the multiplication. 95 divided by 10 is 9 and a half feet. 